assalamu alaikum my name is dr vikram and uh, today the topic of presentation is urological investigations the learning objective of our presentations are urine detailed report cytology hematology investigations in urology ultrasound scan and x rays now what is urine analysis the urine analysis is the fundamental test that should be performed in all urological patients presenting with urinary symptoms and complaints the component of urine analysis are physical and gross examination dipstick chemical analysis microscopic analysis culture and cytological examination all urine sample should be examined within 1 hour of collection and plated for culture and sensitivity if indicated if not possible to examine the urine promptly then it should be refrigerated at 5 degree centigrade now the collection of urinary say anybody can tell us uh, how to collect urine sample in male patient ustad in male patient urine uh, mid scene sample should be collected uh, first of all if a patient is circumcised uh, we have to clean the uh, genitalia or we uncircumcised uh, we have to protect the prepuce and then uh, you should clean the uh, glands and also the external mates and then uh, collect the mid stream sample what is mid stream sample and um, first the uh, patient start voiding and uh, after the initial uh, few ml then he uh, put a wide uh, mouth container in front of the stream and collect yes is there any another way of collecting sample in male patient Have you heard about four containers? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Or someone, Aslan? In in four uh, containers, usually uh, you collect the initial sample in uh, the uh, container number one. Then midstream sample will be in container number two. Then you do prosthetic massage, and prosthetic secretion will be on. Uh, Uh, sample three, and post post prosthetic massage, uh, urine sample will be in uh, uh, sample number four. So uh, sample one is indicated in the uh, in which side of uh, urinary tract infection? Yes, urethra. Yes, urethra, and uh, three and four. Prostate and prostate. And uh, what about female patient? How to collect sample in female patient? Again, with the cleaning the genitalia and the, to uh, part the labia majora and the labia minora, and the, uh, ask the female to void the first ten uh, to fifteen ml, and then catch the midstream urine for the uh, sampling. Yes, and if the uh, female patient is having a recurrent UTI, it is better to collect the sample with, with the, the uh, catheterization. Catheter. And uh, infants, anybody? Uh, infants. There are the different methods. Like if we uh, we can uh, observe for the wording of the infants, and we can collect the midstream. Otherwise, we can attach the bag to the infants. And if the child cannot be uh, child is unable to void, then we can uh, also collect through the supra pubic or the per uh, urethral catheterization. Yes, it is a little bit invasive, but uh, it is one of the best way to collect urine in in infants. So, sir, beside four uh, container technique, there is uh, another technique as well, which is two container technique. When it is not feasible to collect four samples, and uh, we can also uh, collect two samples, uh, urinary samples, and adult male as well, pre uh, prostatic massage and post prostatic massage, and they have the equal results for prostatitis. So, this is the technique in neonates. attaching euro bag in the enteritis in female patient especially and uh, and another is clean catch method and the third one is stimulating the supra pubic region for urinating and collect the sample and third is passing a tube feeding tube or catheter tube in in female and collect the sample and third one and fifth one is supra pubic aspiration now physical and gross examination um, after collecting the sample we should examine for the uh, we should examine for the color of the urine 
uh, the color of the urine are different colors which uh, which a person can urinate the the normal is pale yellow color containing urochrome pigment or colorless uh, which is diluted urine urochrome is not other than the urobilinogen in the in the urine and the various food metabolic products medication and infection may produce abnormal urine color like cloudy milky urine uh, which uh, which could be in the faucetuuria pyuria or kyluria and red color urine and hematuria hemoglobinuria lead poisoning beads and the drug rifampicin in orange color urine the patient may uh, the patient may have dehydration and uh, or using the drug sulfasalazine in brown color uh, the reason could be beans porphyria chloroquine metronidazole or nitrofurantoin and brown black methyl dopa hemorrhage or sorbitol the order of urine the order of urine could be ammonia like which indicates that the urine is containing urea aspirating bacteria like protease pseudomonas nicordia or klebsiella the urine could be foul or offensive flaming uh, smell which could indicate a old specimen for sudden inflammation ketones in urine uh, fru uh, fruity smell in urine odor in urine uh, can indicate the ketones in the urine which is not a normal finding now chemical analysis which is a dipstick test so dipstick test is a quick and inexpensive results in 16 to 120 seconds highly sensitive it's a cost effective and that uh, we can check the 10 parameter results in one strip it is a short plastic strip with small marker pads that are impregnated with different chemical reagents with the re react with abnormal substances in the urine to produce a colorimetric change so here is a short video of this uh, dipstick test i have included this video because we are not uh, generally doing this uh, doing this examination in our general practice because of having a uh, edge of having a laboratory by our side but uh, if you are going to another anywhere uh in the world we can use in office this dip 6 test and it is very easy to use and interpret the catheter the uh, gather the equipment hand wash gloves apron urine dip stick sample and paper towel confirm the patient details in the specimen inspect the color of urine clarity assess for any order check the expiry now remove that stripping from the container after removing the container we should and um, apply the uh, the tap the cap of the this container immediately because it can if we can uh, let it be uh, without opening without closing the container it could give false results in the future after collecting the sample we, uh, we should uh, put the this strip in horizontal position and interpret like this match the color and interpret the findings discard the sample to complete so this is a this is the strip this the normal one immerse in the urine and these are the possible results which could be uh, this the i mean to say the colorimetric change of the urine and interpret the the findings and the maximum 
time duration is for leukocyte which is 120 seconds and the minimum is for glucose which is only 30 seconds and this dots of blood uh, indicates uh, there is a uh, lot of blood in the urine now the specific gravity the normal specific gravity of the urine is 1.008 uh, to 1.020 is the range and it reflects the patient state of hydration abnormal renal function renal concentrating ability diluted uh, less than 1.008 specific gravity uh, indicates a diluted urine which could be due to diuretic use diabetes insipidus renal tubular uh, disease or increased fluid intake and more than 1.020 is concentrated urine uh, like in glucosuria where the osmolarity of the uh, urine increases SIADH or dehydration. So specific gravity can, uh, we can say it reflects the osmolarity of the urine. Or pH. Normal, normal pH of uh, urine sample. Anybody know? What is the range of pH in a normal patient? When we can see patient, uh, urine sample is acidic and when we can see it is uh, alkaline. 5 is considered as acidic and if it is a 6.5 to the 7.5 then it is con uh, considered as alkaline urine. So more than 6.5 is alkaline and less than 5.5 uh, is considered to be acidic. Huh? And metabolic or respiratory acidosis, the urine pH is acidic and vice versa, except in renal tubular acidosis, in which the alkaline urine because of loss of bicarb and blood in acidemia. Urea splitting organism, most commonly protease, convert ammonia into ammonium and markedly elevated in urine pH, which is more than 7.5, and causes precipitation of calcium, magnesium, ammonium phosphate crystals. Which could crystallize, uh, which causes crystallization and form the Staghorn calculus. The urine pH is acidic in patients with uric acid and cysteine stones. Alkalinization of urine is important in therapy of both conditions. Blood or hematuria. Uh, the normal value of, uh, of uh, we can say it is a hematuria when it exceeds. More than three RBCs uh, per high power field, uh, the sensitivity of the test will be more than 90%. The degree of color change is directly related to the amount of hemoglobin present in the urine specimen because of the peroxidase like activity of hemoglobin. Hematuria can be distinguished from myoglobinuria, hemoglobinuria by microscopic examination of centrifuge urine. When you, you are suspecting hematuria and depth stick, you have to confirm it with microscope. <clears throat> False positive results can occur in menstruation, dehydration, <clears throat> and vigorous exercises. Hematuria with nephrologic origin is frequently with associated in urine and always associated with significant proteinuria. Urological causes of hematuria is unlikely to elevate protein concentration in urine in 100 to 300 milligram per deciliter or 2 or 3 positive, uh, which can indicate the origin of glomerular or tubular interstitial origin. Now, the dysmorphic shape of RBC on microscope indicate hematuria from glomeruli origin with urological causes and tubular interstitial are uniformly round shape. Now, the anticoagulant therapy at a therapeutic dose doesn't cause hematuria. So, uh, if a patient came to an emergency with a hematuria with a history of taking anticoagulant, it doesn't mean that the cause of hematuria is anticoagulant. If he is taking it in a therapeutic dose, you have to investigate and see if there is another cause other than that. Because anticoagulant in normal therapeutic dose doesn't cause hematuria. Causes of hematuria. Can anyone roughly tell the what are the possible causes of hematuria? Uh, 
the causes could be pre renal renal this is uh, the possible causes of uh, could be of pre renal renal and post renal in pre renal uh, any bleeding disorder uh, any use of anti coagulant which uh, not in therapeutic dose glem and the renal cause could be glomerulonephritis pyelonephritis interstitial nephritis stones renal tuberculosis any tumor polycystic disease trauma or infarct in post renal <clears throat> the cause could be and the hematuria could uh, the origin of the hematuria could be from ureter bladder prostate or urethra it could be the neoplasm stone tumor and uh, and in bladder it could be due to uh, due to the parasite stosomia or in prostate carcinoma or benign prostatic um, or any benign disease or in urethra trauma tumor infection or a stone impacted stone in the urethra proteinuria the normal range of proteinuria in the urine is 18 to 150 uh, mg per day in which there is 30% are albumin 30% globulin 40% tissue protein majority tem or small protein proteinuria may be the first indication of renovascular glomerular or tubular interstitial disease or it may represent the overflow of abnormal protein like in multiple myeloma most of the proteinuria can be uh, categorized in three categories uh, glomerular proteinuria tubular proteinuria or overflow proteinuria globular proteinuria it is the most common type of proteinuria which results from the increased glomerular capillary permeability to protein especially high molecular weight protein which is albumin and the 24 hour urinary protein is is in the range of 1 to 3 g and tubular proteinuria uh, it, is, uh, it is of low molecular weight protein and that is immunoglobulin uh, rather than albumin which is a uh, high molecular weight proteinuria and the overflow proteinuria occurs in the absence of renal disease and is caused by increased plasma concentration of abnormal immunoglobulin and other low molecular weight protein example ben jones protein in multiple myeloma false negative results can occur in alkaline urine diluted urine or the primary protein present is not albumin in dipstick test so then dipstick test we can we cannot uh, see uh, other low molecular weight heparins if quantitative test reveals proteinuria qualitative test reveals proteinuria this should be quantified with the 24 hour urinary collection immunoassay is the method of choice for detecting specific proteins such as ben jones protein in multiple myeloma now the how can we evaluate the proteinuria this is the flow chart which we can see here and uh, now the person one who ha, who is having proteinuria we can repeat the sample after some time if it is when uh, if the proteinuria is vanished then it could be the transient cause and the causes of uh, transient proteinuria could be history of fever exercise emotional stress congestive heart failure and if we are repeating on the urine dr and there is no further proteinuria then no further investigation is needed uh, if it is persisting then evaluate for the persistent uh, mh uh, proteinuria and other is intermittent proteinuria which is related to the position if, it, if the person is in upright position it is orthostatic uh, proteinuria uh, if the person is not having this uh, proteinuria on this position then evaluate for the persistent proteinuria uh, how to do the management of persistent proteinuria is collect 24 hour urine protein and qualify the evaluation so if the, if the test indicates proteinuria more than 2000 mg per 24 hour and primarily it is albumin then the cause could be of glomerular proteinuria now if the glomerular proteinuria is associated with hematuria with the dysmorphic erythrocyte and erythrocyte cast evaluate for glomerular hematuria and if it is not containing if the sample is not having rbcs in the blood, in the urine then further evaluation for a specific disease like diabetes amyloidosis or other diseases or if the 24 hour urine does not quantify 
the proteinuria more than 2000 g mg per 24 hours then the primary uh, cause could be of globulins which is if it uh, if the globulins are in normal protein then tubular proteinuria evaluate for a specific disease like fengoni disease drug or heavy metals intoxications or sarcoidosis if the globulins are abnormal proteins <clears throat> like immunoglobulins evaluate for the benz jones proteins multi uh, hemoglobinuria or myoglobinuria glucose and ketones almost all the glucose filter in glomeruli is reabsorbed from the proximal cholinergic tubules renal threshold corresponding to serum glucose is about 1 mg per deciliter above this level glucose will be detected in urine ketones normally not form uh, are not excreted in urine ketone will appear in urine before the serum after abnormal fat breakdown the causes are diabetes diabetic ketosis ketoacidemia bilirubin and urobilinogen bilirubin and urobilinogen basically these two are pigment from uh, from the gi tract can anyone tell me the from where this bilirubin came in the urine or urobilinogen came in the come in the urine from which path basically the bilirubin and urobilinogen uh starting from the liver uh, because the bilirubin is converted in the is converted there are two forms of bilirubin conjugated and unconjugated and the conjugate conjugation occurs in, by the enzyme in the liver uh, changing the un unconjugated bilirubin in the conjugated form and then flow into the uh, from into the uh, from the bile duct towards the second part of duodenum the conjugated one and passes in the in the gut and the normal flora of the gut changes the bilirubin into the urobilinogen and the, uh, 50% of the urobilinogen is excreted through the stool and rest of 50% of uro, urobilinogen is reabsorbed by the enterohepatic circulation now this 50% which is in now in circular hepato in the hepatic in the enterohepatic circulation most of this is reabsorbed by the liver by the hepatocytes and 4 to, four to 5 gram which is uh, because it is a um, because the uh, urobilinogen is not a uh, i mean to say the urobilinogen is not um, it's water soluble and water soluble in, uh, absorbed in the urine and thus this little amount of urobilinogen is present in the urine now if the urinobilinogen pigment pigments are more in the urine then we can say the the patient must have any hepatic disease normally urine doesn't contain urinobilinogen and contains only small amount of urobilinogen false negative result can occur in the presence of ascorbic acid and the causes are joint dys hepatic or extra hepatic nitrites and leukocyte strays leukocyte strays activity indicate the presence of wbc in urine the sensitivity of test decreases with the time because of lysis of neutrophils majority of the cause of false positive leukocyte sterase is contamination presence of nitrites in urine is strongly suggestive of bacteria if the dipstick test is positive for leukocyte sterase but negative for nitrites non infectious causes of inflammation should be considered for the non infectious causes of the uh, nitrate positive sterile biourea anybody causes and uh, what is definition of sterile biourea uh, presence of the <coughs> presence of the wbcs are plus cells in the urine without any uh, organic uh, cause without any presence of any infectious causes negative culture and causes the tuberculosis we mostly find the sterile biourea tuberculosis is known for nobody's the sensitivity of the test is 35 to 80 percent while specificity is more than 90 percent it is less accurate if the urine specimen contain less than 10 rest uh, 10 into rest of 5 organisms per ml in the microscopic examination 10 to 15 ml of urine centrifuge for 5 minutes at 3000 round per minute 
the sediment is taken on a glass slide for microscopic examination in low power magnification which is uh, around 100 uh, around 100 magnifications the erythrocyte leukocyte cast cell cysteine crystals parasite like gistosoma hematomium and trichomonas can be visualized but here in our laboratory we are doing uh, magnification of 10 10 up to 40 because they can see easily see on this magnification and high power magnification uh, on high power magnification we can distinguish if, uh, if the low power magnification magnification is showing any erythrocyte then on the high power magnific magnification we can distinguish among the shape of the rbc between the shape of the rbcs whether it is dysmorphic or round shape rbc which indicates other pathologies we will see later and the type of crystals identify bacteria and yeast we can also identify on high power magnification the type of bacteria whether it is uh, cocci or bacillus by seeing the shape of the bacteria and mainly urine sediment should be examined for cells cost crystal bacteria yeast and parasites car cells what are the what are the car cells these are these are the basically protein coagulums that is formed in the renal tubule and traps and tubular luminal content within the matrix tam sarsfall mucoprotein which are no clinical uh, uh, which in <clears throat> which is no clinical significance if it is in low quantity rbc cast contain entrapped erythrocyte and are diagnostic of glomerular bleeding most likely glomerulonephritis wbc cast are observed in acute pyelonephritis or glomerulonephritis and fatty cast are seen in nephrotic lipiduria and hypothyroidism now these are the rbc's cast the cluster of rbc's are trapped in the in the tubules the red color one and these are the wbc cast trapped in the tubules by surrounding matrix and the identification of crystals in the urine is important for a stone disease which helps determine the etiology identification of cysteine crystal establishes the diagnosis of cystinuria and the crystal precipitated in an acidic urine are calcium oxalate uric acid and cysteine and the crystal precipitated in alkaline urine are calcium phosphate triple phosphate crystals now when the if the uh, that's why the stone analysis is important because the patient is having uh, calcium phosphate or triple phosphate stone and uh, we cannot just advise him to take uh, any drug which uh, further alkaline alkalinize the urine because it will first uh, worse the state uh, it will worse the condition it will produce more stones calcium oxalate crystals in urine can be seen like this octahedral in shape and the cysteine, uh, which is amino acid, it is an abnormal finding in urine, rarely seen. These crystals are found in acidic urine and seen as thin, colorless hexagonal plates. And triple phosphate crystals are colorless and uh, they are formed normally in the alkaline or neutral urine. And uric acid crystals are urine. And this, this is the parasite containing the Pelagium, Trichomonas. Now coming to the cytology, uh, it is important to uh, to uh, it is uh, cytology is important in urethral cell carcinomas. The sensitivity of this test is increases when there is a high grade tumor, and uh, if it is a low grade tumor, the sen the sensitivity is very low of this test cytology. Now, can anyone tell me the, how to collect the sample for cytology? Is it same like to collect the sample of uh, for culture, which is early morning sample, first urine sample? Not morning sample because in morning sample there is cytolysis. Any other method?
as I told that it is, should not be the morning sample because it it might contain the uh, cytolyzed uh, cells in the and number two there are uh, uh, barbotide technique to collect the urine cytology and there you can also collect the cytology by doing the intervention into the uterine from the kid okay. intervention like when you go into the uh, you, for the barbotide uh, sample and the cytol brush cytology a technique to, you can collect the sample from the bladder from the uterine or the, from the rectum yes, using the uterine catheter as well putting in the in the ureters and uh, collect the fresh urine from the ureters so in cytology urine in cytology baby show this norm this normal cells and another which are the malignant urethelial cells containing hyperchromatic materials polymorphic nucleus now you can differentiate between this and this picture the cytoplasm to, nu uh, to nuclear ratio is uh, is also elevated in this picture less cytoplasm more nucleus and this is light microscope of squamous cells in urine same picture hypochromatin material nuclear to cytoplasm ratio other investigations our cbc which are which we are very familiar to this investigations urea creatin electrolytes pta ptt serum calcium and parathyroid uh, for stone workup including uric uric acid and uh, urinary oxalate or cysteine levels metabolic study of urine and genetic study for hyperoxaluria for doing metabolic study of urine what uh, what are the possible indications for metabolic study of urine when we should advise for the test and any prerequisite for metabolic study of urine the prerequisite is the patient must have uh, stone free and and infection free because it could uh, manipulate the results and psa it is produced by prostatic laminal epithelial epithelial cells normal value is less than 4 nanogram per deciliter and the psa it is important to have uh, in the evaluation and management of prostatic cancers benign prostatic hyperplasia and uh, prostatitis and alpha fetoprotein we can see in the yolk sac tumors of the testes and beta hcg choriocarcinoma and uh, prolactin testosterone fh and lh to evaluate for any hypogonadism and vma level uh, which are the met um, uh, which are basically uh, basically are the metabolic part of the epinephrine and norepinephrine and evaluate for any few chromocytoma ultrasound a very important tool for urology for urologist which is the cost effective widely available uh, no radiations and no contra no contrast now uh, now them now in, in the emerging fields yes we can also use the contrast as well but uh, for simple evaluation and in office based ultrasound is very cost effective but the the disadvantage of the ultrasound it is operator dependent and not good for ureters now this is the picture of the kidney on ultrasound showing the pelvis this is the the black one is the renal cortex these are the renal sinuses and minor with major calyx this is the, the this is the calculus showing showing in shadow acoustic shadow and uh, hydronephrosis what is hydronephrosis the collecting of the urine in the in the uh, collecting collection of the urine or swelling in the, of the renal pelvis 
which we are categorizing subjectively in mild hydronephrosis, moderate and severe hydronephrosis. In mild hydronephrosis, we can only see the dilated pelvis. And this, which is a paw shape, uh, beer's paw shape, uh, hydronephrosis, which is, none other the, which is none other than the foot of the foot of, it's just like a foot of a beer, in which pelvis and the calluses are dilated. So we label it a moderate hydronephrosis. And in severe hydronephrosis, there is a blunting of uh, pelvis dilated, calus dilated, and along with the calus cell dilatation, there is a blunting of calus as well. And in sometimes there is a thinning, uh, thinning of parenchyma of the kidney. Now, can you can anyone tell me what is this? Yes, this is the cyst at the lower at the lower pole, which is a which is the lesion at the lower pole of the kidney uh, with well margins, aninoic, aninoic lesions, not containing any septas or any echoes within it. And this is the this is the picture of, of the bladder containing a stone within it. And this is a soft, again, this is a bladder and containing soft tissue density mass at the let uh, at the base of the tumor at uh, the base of the urinary bladder near the trigone and we can confirm by putting the cdi button whether it is it is clot or uh, or it is uh, any any growth or uh, and, and we can also confirm by the changing of the position of this lesion because if it is a clot it is moved by changing changing of the position of the patient and an x-ray kub uh, it is also a cost effective, easily available, uh, but the, uh, it has a radiation exposure. 25% of the stones are radiolucent and hence cannot be visualized on plain X ray KUB. The indications of X ray KUB is in scout film and anticipation of contrast administration, assessment of present of residual contrast from a previous imaging, pre and post treatment assessment of renal calculus, and assessment of a position of drain and Stunts. Limitations of this study is overlying stool and bowel gases may obscure small calcular partial radio-opaque stones. Stones may be obscured by other substances such as bones or ribs. Calcification in the pelvic veins or vascular structure may be confused with ureteral calculi and poorly calcified or radiolucent stones. Uh, this is the plain x-ray. Anybody can tell me what's wrong on this x-ray? Uh, exposure basically uh, x-ray qb exposure should be from the synthesized pubic up to the uh, diaphragm l10 uh, uh, t10 t11 so in this uh, x-ray there is uh, synthesized pubic is not fully uh, visualized so normal x-ray qb is uh, around 43 centimeter standard size so, so if a patient is tall enough so you have to do it in two sections so one is for the upper section and one for the lower sections. So this one, we can appreciate the upper borders and also the symphysis pubis. And these what, are the. What is the difference between X-ray abdomen and X-ray QB? X-ray abdomen supine. Usually, X-ray QB is more focused and the literal abdominal wall is not included. So, the radiation exposure is less than X-ray abdomen. So, and the other thing is that X-ray QB, usually you ask the patient to prepare and come fasting. So, you can visualize any uh, abnormalities on the uh, urinary systems. Yeah, X-ray abdomen has its own indications. And this is the X-ray, which can we can appreciate the the radio opaque shadow at the level of L3 to L4, which could be which could be a stone in the ureter. Thank you.